Hello friends, welcome back to MathStack. In today's session, I'm going to talk about a very, very critical and important topic, which is performance testing. So before deploying to production, there has to be a load testing performed on your application. Okay. So there are multiple tools available in the market, like EPHG meter, load ninja, load runner, very important tool like new load, load complete. Okay. So I, from a, in this session, we're going to talk about uh, and uh, you know uh, we go to the demo on Apache Jmeter. Okay, so first of all, let's discuss why we need load testing. We have seen in the past, and still we are seeing that some popular sites like they suffered you know serious downtime when they you know received a massive traffic volumes. Some some websites are like e-commerce site, you know, toys stores or airline websites or even. In Encyclopedia Britannia, you know, they declare the free access to their online database as a promotional offer, and they were not able to handle, you know, that you know traffic for weeks. Okay, so why why load testing is you know needed? First of all, it gives you confidence in the system and its reliability and performance. Second, it helps you know uh, identifying the bottlenecks in the system under heavy user stress scenarios before they happen in the production environment. Third thing is it gives you excellent protection against poor performance and accommodates complementary strategies for performance management and monitoring of a production environment. So what how uh, what goals you can set it during the load testing? You can you can you know you can uh, you know uh, set the goals like you know response time per transaction, performance of system components under various loads. You can give different kinds of load and check. How your you know system is behaving. If you are using database component, then check the database you know under you know performance of database under different loads. Check the network delay between client and server. We can we can set the goals you know like uh, you know software design should be there any hardware limitations. We can see that like uh, CPU utilization, memory limitations, network bottleneck. All these things we can set as a goal of load testing. Okay. So as I said in, in the demo of this session, we'll be looking at the Apache Jmeter. So let me take you to the demo session. So I have downloaded Apache Jmeter. So let me jump on to that. You can go ahead and go to okay. Just go ahead and say. Jmeter download. So you find the site. Anyway, I'll add this link in the description below. So from here, you can download the you know Jmeter. So I have already downloaded. You can see that you'll get a zip file. You unzip that file and you'll find. So I have downloaded Apache Jmeter 5.3. Go to the bin folder. Okay. Inside the bin folder, you'll find all this. Required scripts over here. So we'll be starting command line from here and start our G, you know, Jmeter in GUI. Okay. So there is a, you know, there is a fat file over here. Go ahead and start. So you'll get a Jmeter over here. Let me increase the font. So before creating test plan, let me copy this command. This command is very important. We are going to use this command while running our Jmeter in non g mode. Okay. So I discuss this later. Let me go to my notepad. But copy paste this command over here. Okay. So basically, this command says, okay, run your Jmeter minus n is nothing but non geo mode minus t is asking for your test plans. We'll be passing test plan five here, start James file. Minus l is saying that, okay, after running this test plan, where you want to store the result. Okay. Last but not the least, minus e minus o, this is generating the, the dashboard files. So it will read these test results and it will generate the dashboard for you. So you need to pass the 
you know, uh, path of your folder where you want to generate all those files, dashboard files. Okay. So we anyway we run this file, uh, we run this command, we create all those files and see it. But first, let's go ahead and generate our case plan first. So I'll go ahead and this one. We can go ahead here. And first, okay, case plan. Let me give a name to this test plan. I wanted to uh, you know input a website or REST API, which uh, I wanted to create 20 users. Which will be triggering that API in parallel. So you see 20 users load testing. Okay. Now, here you need to add threads. Thread groups are representing the number of threads in that group represent user, individual users. So I'm giving 20. And I wanted to run this into a loop five times. Okay. So this is your you're creating number of threads and how many times you wanted to run those threads. So you know at a time we'll be running 20 threads and we'll be running in the five counts. Let's go ahead. So I will say instead of thread group, I'll say 20 users. 20 users. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add a sampler. Sampler are nothing but what you want to test, whether you want to test HTTP. Or whether you want to test FTP, JDPC, or JUnit, or even LDAP. Okay. So I wanted to test STDP here. Okay. So I'll just say, so I have a, a free public REST API which runs on STDPS. And my host name is request.in. And path, I'm using get method, and path is API slash users slash user id i can use anything so i'm using three then after running this so i just give me more to you second press dot okay finally i'll add you can add a session also so you can go ahead and add a session so I'll just add response session saying that response code should be equal to and here I say now I wanted to see the results so I go ahead and add the listener over here so I say view results so here I say wait, I wanted to store this results. So I'll just go up a little bit and I store in this file. So I just say test results and I store those in CSV file. Okay, that's fine. Now let's run this and see first before running, let's save this run. So I just say save it. So this is my 20 user stored testing KMS file. This is okay. Let's run this and see. You can see that it's getting executed, and you know you'll be able to see 100 requests were triggered on this EP. And you can see that you are able to see response method OK, response code 200, request was triggered for this URL, and response you can see that it's um, I can go ahead and show you that. I'll just go ahead and say a request on me. Yeah, so it is available. You can see my speed cost. That is what the result we are able to see here. So if you go to the folder, there will be a result file created. Yes, you can see that. And there will be 100 records. See that 101 that means 100 records and 100. Request were thrown to this API and still, uh, you know, stable and able to return the results without any fail. Okay. Now, what I do, I go ahead and run this GUI mode, non GUI mode, which I made in the non GUI mode, and we'll see it generates the dashboard also, beautiful dashboard for us. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this into, let me close this first. See, let's go ahead. So let's copy this command first. 
Okay, so let's first give a folder name. So I want to give folder name called we are running from bin folder. So we go one level up and then here I create paper reports folder. Paper reports. So that's where all dashboard files will be stored. And here I'll be storing the results, states results. So again, we go into the results.csv and just now you create the table file, so we use that table file here. So that is twenty. What's the name of that? And these files are available. Okay. So first, let me go ahead and create a folder here, which is web reports. So it has already this command. So only the file is exist there. We we'll go ahead and create new file. Let's exit it successfully. You can go ahead and see here the files got created properly. So our dashboards we can initiate by triggering or opening this index So let's go ahead and open it. Now you can see that beautifully the dashboard got created for us. You can see the chart over here. You can see throughput chart. You can see transaction per seconds here. See these are the goals. You can go ahead here and see response times versus request. You can go ahead and see. so this is the dashboard got created when we ran or generated in non jewel Okay. So we have seen that how Jmeter works in the GUI mode, how Jmeter works in the non GUI mode. Hope it will be useful. And this load testing is really, really important. And the command which we run is like in non GUI mode. This command, we can integrate with our CICD pipeline to you know, test our application against the various different kind of loads. So you can create dot JMX file and then pass that JMX file during our you know, CICD pipeline execution. Okay. So it's important topic, yeah. Uh, please uh, take it seriously and uh, you know, do your load testing before deploying the product. Thank you for watching this session. Hope it is useful for useful for your projects. Uh, please subscribe the channel, share with your friends, hit the like button, hit the bell icon so that you get you no know, notification for new latest videos. Thank you.